Oh baby, let's be a vex and show A weekly talk show, where Seth and Ho she bring him the show effects from movies and shows That try to put them back together again What's so special? It's a 40-30 special. What's a 40-30 special? It's 40% off Max on One or 30% off any annual subscription. And what can you do with Max on One? Great question. All this stuff. What? 40% off Max on One? It's a ridiculously low price for all the tools you get. Yeah, 30% off any annual subscription. It's pretty darn good too. So like, why is this special so special? Well, because it's the two year anniversary of the last time we had a May special, special. What? Remember when we regularly held a sales special in May, like every year? We didn't have a special last year. That's why we're especially excited to announce a very special special to celebrate the two year anniversary of our May specials. I'm tired. How long is the special? Three days. Right, and why are there two of me? I don't know. Welcome back. It's VFX and Chill. I'm Seth. That's Hashi. That's Michael. This week, we are going to talk about the creator, Gareth Edwards himself. Hashi, Michael, I thought this man had gone, this guy man had gone silent since Rogue One. I worried he was out of the game because of the stupid crap that happened in all the trades about the reshoots as if that were on Rogue One, as if that were something that didn't happen on normal movies all the time. And yet, this week, hope was presented to us from the creator. We're uh, talking, the of course. The creator himself. We're talking about hope. Gareth. Wait. What? Hmm? A, a new hope? Okay. Bye. You are in timeout. So, <laughs> just kidding. I can't. So, go away. so Seth, yes. have you ever wished that there were a cool movie about, like, set in, like, the future when, like, AI is has become sentient and nuclear bombs some cities and then like the resistance of the remaining humans like have to fight robots the rest of it yes if so always and people and look i'm never going to watch the terminator it's probably not what i'm looking for what i'm looking oh, yes. for like, yeah Ign ignoring you know anything made before 96 just i actually can't let that go on the record i love the terminator but one and two the first one is a friggin horror movie it's great okay backing up though but have yes. you ever wished that the person who directed the movie about what how the death star plans got from point a to b very specific wishes and prayers you've made. To I don't know. I have, I have really specific you know, wishes about things, <laughs> but either way, I have very specific needs. It, you know, what's, you know, what's really cool, Seth is when a different version of taken, savvy. I have a very specific set of needs and like the terror, the, the kidnapper on the other end of the phone is like, it, it just, it's the call and taken takes a totally different tone. Sorry. Uh, out of my head and into yours. What? I, I love it, but I love you. Ain't it great when people who are, visual effects fluent get to make movies oh god it certainly I think, is I think it's cool like i mean can you imagine if you were a creator in their mid-30s doing practically all the visual effects on your own movie about monsters i i can imagine this um, i'm speaking of course of oh god <laughs> speaking uh, of yeah. monsters the film speaking from gareth monsters. edwards you know, it's funny as I was telling my wife, I was like, she's like, what are you doing on the show today? And I said, uh, we're, uh, it's a new movie that came out this week from a director we really love. Um, a guy named Gareth Edwards. He did Rogue One. He did Godzilla. And he did that movie Monsters that he shot like him and Scoot McNary. And I forget the actress's name and like a producer and an audio guy. And they just walked around some South American like, yeah. city and 
or Mexico. I can't remember where they shot it, but they walked around and just shot this thing on the fly, like run and gun. And then he did all these visual effects himself. And she's like, Oh yeah, I remember that one. Exactly. Like, yeah. Cause it's a, it was like a, it was a big thing. It was such a memorable thing. The guy went and did what we did and succeeded. That's crazy. So Seth, so you're on, you're on track. You're on, you're on, on track in terms of, you know, everything about life my life is on track here. right now. Everything. Um, and that, that's that I always say this about you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, first off, Michael, you, 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 uh, you've been traveling the globe. How you doing? I've been doing great. I was in Germany last week and it was, it was a lovely time. Got to got to got to eat European food, which I love, and got to chat with my people all food? over the world. You're, you know, uh, German food and Italian food because you know everything's all close together right there. So it was, yeah, it was, it was nice. I I like the food. I like the people. It was a good time. Oh, I love it. I so love Michael is speaking time. of. Uh, I believe that you addressed it on the show last week, Seth. But uh, yeah, Maxon has their annual. Um, what do we call it? The the global summit. Summit. Where the global everyone summit. From, it sounds so ominous. I don't know why we call it the summit. It was well, all I feel company like if you meeting. Go to was anything that has global friendly. in the title, you're do, you're up to something. It's true. Yeah. But uh, but that's wonderful. It's where uh, we get to talk about all the cool things we want to do uh, for the people like you who come to watch our show and uh, yeah, with was, the people who could a, actually probably get it done. There was a really good. Uh, like <clears throat> main morning session where everyone in the company was there and Paul who's the head of marketing was gave a very impassioned speech about how we need to put our artists first and stuff like that that was really good it, that was a big focus of the whole the whole summit was how to make better tools for Thanks, artists Paul. to use I so love was, that Paul it was, it was all about community executive because, producer of this show <laughs> Exactly. Executive, executive no, it's, it's, producer. It's the, the, main, the main thing Paul Babb is known for. <laughs> yes, executive, executive producer of VFX and Chill. But, I mean, he, he's making a good point. It's, it's the whole reason why Maxon has the success that they've had is that they've had a big focus on community and building up and lifting up the artists that use these tools. And I, I think I think it's always good to remind everyone in the company why we're, they are making the tools. Like the engineers in their little engineer, you know, core, you know, basements or wherever they code, like – it's nice for them to get a reminder that the stuff that they're using is like they're building the paintbrushes that artists are using to create amazing work. And so it's, it's nice to kind of remind them of the stuff. We also got some presentations from uh, people who have used the tools to produce some amazing work. Uh, so it was, it was, it was just kind of all around uh, a lot of good planning for future tools coming out. Uh, a lot of good planning, uh, really good kind of inspiration for creativity and uh, it's all around, all around a good time. I got, I left excited and uh, also left with knowledge of the sale coming out, which is exciting. So if you have, didn't catch the ad at the beginning, uh, Maxon is doing a big sale starting soon. Information is linked in the chat. But, uh, yeah, there's a big 40-30 thing going on where it's forty it's going to be 40% off any new subscriptions to Maxon One and 30% off any new subscriptions to any of the single tools. So, like, if you're like, hey, I'd really like to get on the newest particular or the, the new Magic Bullet looks, which is amazing, uh, now is your chance. So if you not subscribed yet jump on it or if you need more licenses jump on it sales coming soon uh soon soon jump on it i feel like yeah people are asking us all the time when when's your next sale then oh yeah now finally almost in a couple days soon finally a sale like (laughs) we haven't had super clear answer absolutely there's many adjectives so so that promo it, it i it i would imagine you probably had a lot of time to put that together seth Mm-hmm. And I want to know if it's going to be live, if that's live somewhere, because I miss I miss those kind of promos for stuff. I miss I miss uh, the character Red Giants Seth Worley. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I had to uh, had presenting to, me with uh, information. I had to open up the old the had to pull them out of the closet, dust him off, and uh, it looked good. Looked good. He did just fine. Yeah, he. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 that's it. That's all. That's all I got. That, he also it. relies heavily on a script um, to do anything. Uh, so he's not, that's why this sentence is going the way that it's going. You know, speaking of the way that it's going, how about a segue into talking about the creator? The creator. God. 
So we are gathered here today. We gather here today to talk about Gareth Edwards. Long live the man. This trailer rules, and I'm just going to skim around because I don't want to get flagged by 20th Century Studios. Uh, this is like... Okay, I do want to point out, okay. before, before anything, this is a movie where they explicitly, in the in the voiceover, in the in this trailer, they're like, AI is the bad guy. AI has, has killed everyone. And AI, we're going to stop AI which is great and super topical and hilarious that it's topical, especially considering this, this is a movie that looks like it's been in, you've been working on it for years. Uh, not only that, at the same time, it looks like a wonder dynamics ad because <laughs> which it makes me so happy. It's just all, See, it like works together. Wonder dynamic shots there. Where are they? Here any we of are. Those, yeah. And any of these with like the machine heads, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he turns this, where he turns. Oh, come on! I just want some. That shot where he turns some, his head. Oh yeah, what's I forget the actor's name. He's awesome from Godzilla and uh, Dark Knight or Batman Begins. There we are. Yeah, that so looks good. like one of the dynamics thing. Here, so does. So we figured we'd mess around with some stuff that's in this trailer, right? Oh, like I should say, for those who are unfamiliar, Wonder Dynamics is an AI-driven uh, visual effects project that takes uh, that takes back. and people have been taking uh, it takes your footage we should just upload a clip from this it trailer puts, to wonder dynamics puts a robot into the shot yeah it basically so, yeah go, like so they, like this these ones this looks like uh, a wonder dynamics clip well yeah wait let me see if i can pull up uh if, like that's a good example i'm going to pull up aaron rabinowitz's twitter yeah the one where he pulled uh, the marta stunt footage our pal Marta Svitek, who has, who did a bunch of stunt footage and stuff for us while, during her tenure here. Um, Wonder Dynamics. She's amazing, and I miss her. I I love. Oh, here we are. Yeah. I love trailer cutting to where a robot can kick a little robot in the face and blow up the world. Well, I'm not sharing my screen here. I'll share my screen. I like that actress. I don't so, know who she is. All right, yeah. So, yeah, so if you haven't been oh, watching 100. our show or the web in general, um, right here, this is what <laughs> Wonder Dynamics does. This is, this is AI replacing characters with robots. And, like, going back and forth between that, the, that boxing shot and something like this, I'm like, did they, can you imagine if you were a VFX artist there being like, man, we had to do all this crazy live tracking on set work to do this stuff. And then our movie is going to be released at the same time that this company drops the dragon drop. Yeah. <laughs> the effects studio. I mean, so my, my friend Meg Stacy, who was the DP on my film texted me and said, uh, what's the VFX community take on all this, you know, runway AI stuff. And I texted her back. I said, super exciting. Like since, you know, the future of AI isn't AI replacing a human. It's a human using AI replacing a human, not using AI. I think it's rapidly moving toward the advent of some very cool and needed new tools uh, that will all be released the second our movie is done and not a minute sooner. And so I have to imagine how it feels to be a VFX artist on the creator, <laughs> seeing all the wonder <laughs> dynamic spots coming out. It is really, really great. But I mean, the thing is, if you take, if you just take and sit there and look at a water dynamic shot over and over, you start to notice the problems that it has that would then need to get fixed. And then you're like, well, you're kind of back at square one in some parts because like there's so much little fixing you still have to do on top of it to make it like the the level that you need for a feature film. Totally. Like the the background replacement is a little swimmy sometimes, and the shadows and reflections aren't right. You know, this is just different. Like. like like look at uh, like look at this shot for example like the reflection on the floor of the robot's leg is still Christopher Walken's leg, <laughs> you know like totally you still have to do that. But I mean at the very it's least it's still a really really reliable mocap. I'm excited about AI source. doing depth depth scanning like d depth pulling depth information and doing rotoscoping and those kind of tasks that yes. I don't want to do. <laughs> like isn't it fun? To free me up to do my art. That's what I want. Well, I love that. Yeah, that AI is is swooping in to do a lot of the stuff that we really thought like hardware would solve. Like we're like we're gonna add depth sensors to the front of all of our cameras and measure this stuff. And like stereo cameras are gonna become a real thing. And 
almost all of that is solved by AI generated depth maps because yeah, like depths. I I want roto paint out tracking. That's all the stuff that I want AI right now to take care of for me. Although, and mocap, I'll throw mocap in there as well, especially right now. Um, yes, we're. I feel like there are very many promises of film this and then extract motion capture from it. And I'm not super satisfied with any of them. Uh, no, they're really exciting. Yeah. Like, and not to crap on like, but just they're, some I mean, options for yeah, people I'm, to explore. There's, we have moves by Maxon, which is actually fantastic for facial performance. We've discovered in recent episodes, the, the full body performance we, you and I haven't got to test out very much, but I know that it does. It's, it's not as reliable as the facial. I mean, it's, it's good. I guess I, we don't want to market it I mean, as bad, but like, even with like, with, point marker tracking like in a in a mocap studio you have issues with leg drift and yes. uh, and placement and so it's something that uh, it's this type of cleanup that is difficult to do but i do know that nvidia and a couple of other people are doing some really great experimentations on um motion capture with ai physics integration which which is basically like I'm probably explaining it wrong, but like the the computer has been fed tons and tons of physical motion capture of uh, like people playing basketball or doing gymnastic stunts or like landing and falling on the floor until it learned to be able to do that on its own. And then if you feed it any series of motion capture data, it's the motion capture data now exists in a this is probably the wrong term, but a latent space where it is reapproximating the motion capture data that you just captured. Uh, and running it through its physics sim to make sure that nothing is doing what it couldn't or shouldn't be doing based on looking at a bunch of other human-assisted correction footage. Wait. Remember when I said I don't zone out on the show before we started the show? I just did. But were you talking about a specific tool when you said that, or were you talking just in general? Oh, no, I, I blanked out. I don't, I don't know what happened for the last two minutes. <laughs> no, I mean, like, were you talking about... So these, uh, <laughs> that, I don't what was that one you posted yet? I believe that uh, I could do. Let's see. I'm sure I could find it online because people like the one I that do, estimates uh, the physics of a performance. Like you do a basic performance and it estimates, interpolates the physics of. You mean Cascader? Yeah. Yes. Which is is that the one? Which is a physics-based animation where you say on pose to pose, and it does the physics to get from one pose yes, to the other. Yes, you told us that it was not called. Oh, yeah. It didn't have AI oh, in the title. Yeah. When, yeah. When I first joined the beta way in the early years it was just like physics based animation uh it's helper tool and that then all of a sudden is like ai assisted animation so i'm like listen here is this it uh, hashi or what are you all right oh yeah so this is the one that i'm speaking of and it's possible that it's being used to uh as the underpinnings of what you're talking about michael uh whoops i have i always turn my quality setting down so i can have a copy of the show in the corner uh but basically what uh, this does, and you should honestly just watch this two-minute papers. It's lovely. They trained a an AI brain to try to replicate motion capture. So you see the motion capture there, um, and it's trying to copy movements of it, but not capturing all of the movement. It's trying to get the notion of where pieces of the body are moving. And after tons and tons of training, it starts to get better. So now this blue one is entirely existing within the physics model based on what you would normally get as an input. And so it's oh, great. pretty we're close. Computers. We're teaching computers how to walk. Got it. Exactly. <laughs> so teaching computers how to walk. And so this is the crazy part is that in theory, if you had motion capture of like your monster running around doing stuff like that, and then you had other physical props in your set, they can like, they can intelligibly do what someone would do in that situation. And it's sort of like dialing between, you know, uh, like your animation controls on a, on like a cloth simulation or something like that. If you need it to land in a certain way, you can use the direct capture data, but it's also using the physics data to make sure that you're not getting any like that, that toe penetrates in the mocap file, but it can't in the physics copy. Interesting. Uh, this is what uh, Michael and I were talking about. Uh, this tool, Cascador, is that what it's called? Let us know in the uh, chat I'm if you use this. The, uh, the, this demo is really impressive. It is really impressive. You just like pose it, and then uh, 
All right, so you posed it. Great. There's some love for Gareth Edwards in the chat, and also... Um, ah, that uh, adds this physics, like, it interpolates this physics information between, like, the... So you do, like, a basic, you know, Seth Worley-style animation where it looks bad, and then it adds this, <laughs> like... Oh, that's great. I don't know how it understands the jiggle part of the zombie stuff. Like, well, it's difficult to tell with a demo, like what, you know, yeah, I mean, that, that looks straightforward. Cool. It's a, it's a good idea because, uh, yeah, now that we are in the age where computers can watch what we do and try to reproduce it. Well, like it's, it's interesting. Like, uh, I think there's a, there's a great, um, uh, Adam ruins everything. Uh, Adam Conover has a has a good description of the way AI, like what AI is actually doing, compared to <laughs> what we think it does. Like it's not like it doesn't understand all of this and is figuring it out. It's just getting really, really good at guessing. Like that's that's like all AI is just really, really good at guessing based on having been able to input more, you know, more input than a human can. But are we going to do stuff on the show that isn't AI based? Like, are we going to be recreating some visual effects by hand, like humans do? Like humans like do. Like humans do. We are. Well, yeah. Seth, let's scan through that trailer one more time. And and our lovely friends in the chat, thank you, Moni Visual Pro, for saying uh, Hashi, Seth, and Michael. I love you guys. Nice to see you again. So much excited for today's episode. Crazy fans here. So thank you uh yeah let's scan through this trailer and uh, speaking of scanning there's a there's that's a cool shot right there that is i kind of want to mess around with this because i did i did a dumb little thing uh back in the day let me uh chris rana says ai becomes easier to understand once you start calling it bruce force pattern recognition and reproduction <laughs> which which like i know that's it's not as sexy but it's that, not. that is the AI that we have going on right now. Yes, it is. But if we called it like, you know. Now, did you say brute a, force or Bruce force? Uh, it should have been Bruce force. It should have but, been Bruce force. But, is that actually the name of the guy who patented Bruce the whole force? Thing? That's so, like, like after, after the justice league, like when, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like Batman goes off on his own. He's like, but he can't take the Batman name with him because it's copyrighted to the Justice League. They own it, so he has to start his own thing. That's Bruce Force. That Bruce Force. Um, uh, is not nearly as powerful as Field Force. Uh, not nearly as powerful as Field Force. Oh, the very no silent sound. Field Force. No uh, that wasn't as powerful as the Field Force. Field Force. So much better. Um, I did a tutorial back in the day. <laughs> Uh, when around the time Prometheus came out, because it did this like floating scanner thing that I thought was cool. Wah, 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 wah. So I did this, and that's out there somewhere. I believe it's a red giant classic. The link tutorial. is in the the link is in the chat. For, Look for at you! You, you put it in the chat after this after this show is over. Um, <laughs> to, to enjoy the very loud intro. Yes, please. I'm very proud of that loud intro. I had to make that. Well, fun fact behind the scenes, we had to move the tutorials from an old Red Giant channel to a new Red, to a main Red Giant channel because we had our tutorials and our films separate and more of our followers were on the films channel. So I was tasked with moving the tutorials over to the films channel. But my concern was that a lot of them are older tutorials and people might think, why are you posting these older tutorials? I wanted to spread them out over the course of months so that to increase the engagement and gain followers on the site. So I made this fun little intro that said, enjoy this classic tutorial. I branded them as old and uh, it increased our engagement and our subscribers. And it was a very successful venture. And this little intro was one of my favorite Speaking things I've made. engagement and subscribers, if you have yet to subscribe or engage, please like this video. Please subscribe and hit that bell. Oh, do it. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All, all 34 of you watching right now just left l l let us know your favorite <laughs> movie with artificial intelligence or your favorite shot from this trailer just all just all comment oh, it doesn't matter what it is right or now just, go or just give us a give us a wave say hi uh I'm, so i'm gonna recreate this scanning thing uh oh, or I, I might 
recreate, recreate young Martin Short. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I might put Martin Short uh, in other shots of the film. Because they've they've CG recreated a perfect Martin Short from his unhirable period. You know, like between like <laughs> between like, say when he was Bill Nye and then when he fully transformed into Martin Short. It's that mid that twilight period mm-hmm. uh, that they caught him in here. That is, that's so lovely. Hashi, what about you? What you gonna do? Um, well, there's a first of all, there are some really cool explosions in this trailer oh, no. because. Everyone knows that, you know, like explosions are, you know. <laughs> Lord, look at that light rack. <laughs> so good. Look at that. Got one flare at the top. Nope. So great. Still goes. And you got this, like, wait, flarey vignette thing oh, wait, going. Yeah. And then a shock wave. And then a different. A different shock wave. I like that shot a lot. And I feel like I've seen variations of this uh, throughout a couple of movies. You have dust falling. You were talking about this before the show. I never noticed it. Dust falls ahead of the shock wave. It's really cool because there's the like there's the shock wave and the impact wave and like and so you get it, it, it's like the old if you watch the really old you know like footage of uh, the the bomb tests in the fifties, which where, where if you, you thought the, were fascinating, uh, have we got the movie for you coming up? That's uh. Oppenheimer looks like bomb test footage, the movie, and I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about that. But we'll talk about Oppenheimer. We should do an Oppenheimer episode. I think let's do an we, Oppenheimer. We, episode. we do a bunch of visual effects, and then we claim they're all practical. That'd be great. And then our thumbnail can say like, "This is practical," and it'll be uh, like a like Woody from Toy Story, <laughs> Wait, like waving with a mushroom cloud behind him. All practical, and it's just a clear screenshot from Toy Story One. <laughs> Flawless. So yeah, so here we get into the uh, lasers. Lasers. Lasers, big vaults with creepy children in them. Love me some creepy kid vaults. Okay, let's see what. Let's see. Oh, Nick Smith coming in with uh, Short Circuit Two, favorite AI movie. <laughs> so good. My favorite okay, would the show uh, devs be considered an AI? I can't remember if that was. Uh, no, I didn't see devs. Oh, devs is so moody and great. I love it, and it's got a saxophone in the score. Dogs. Makes me very happy. Um, okay, so we we talked a little bit about this a while back. I and I can't remember what. Was it for Megan or was it for something else? We talked about how we were talking about uh, the original, or rather, the Spielberg movie AI. Yes, a lot. And uh, oh, the the turn. Well, I just don't remember what episode this was for. Yes, it was for but, Megan because we were talking about the turn with the giggly gook stuff. Yes, it was. I remember. Yes. So one of the coolest things that ways that digital effects can enhance that explosion is really really cool too. I that kind of want to. Cool. I want to be able to do that with just After Effects. So if we have like so twenty minutes to? at the end of the episode, I want to recreate that with just After Effects plugins and no third party things. Do it. That's like even even though even though like particular would be really really helpful. It's like it's not. Sky, we can have a race. It's not sky butthole. It's like sky butt cheek. Sky fart. It's sky fart. My favorite James Bond film. <laughs> My favorite of the Daniel Craig Bonds. That was another successful yeah, movie by a visual effects artist turned director, Skyfart. <laughs> Wait, the director's name was Skyfart? I mean, I don't think that was his given name, but, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, missiles. Okay, so this this cool... Ken Watanabe. Ken Watanabe, uh, that's it. Thank you. Um, looks... Um, he, like, here... Like, he's doing a, a Hashi concerned face right now. That's That's... <laughs> Whenever I, whenever I'm not paying attention on the call and I'm zeroed in on my After Effects plugins and doing something like that, that's the face I make. Is just pissed, angry. So anyway, I I really like uh, that was a really long way to say I want to I want to do some robot head stuff. I want to do uh, missing missing parts of faces. This sounds like, like a this. journal entry of mine from like when I was a freshman in college. Like before your parents made sure you saw a counselor. Like, yeah. Make people's... I want to do robot heads. I want to do cyborg head things. 
I want to remove parts of people's heads. Is this what I was saying? <laughs> so, so yeah. To complete a sentence that I started like four minutes ago, I will not let you complete it. Nope, the show is, will end if it happens. Is 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 go for it. That you can do cool. Look at this explosion! Oh my god, it's so good. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. That was it. That was it. You can remove. You can remove Ray Fine's nose finally. Like that, oh! that's, that's like that's, that's really the the gist of this effect is that sub you know additive effects are very cool to do practically. I like I love seeing amazing makeup effects. I love seeing uh, Hellboys and uh, Tim Curry's and people in amazing Tim layers. Tim Curry. Of- Tim Curry is just a prosthetic. Tim Curry yeah, Jim in Curry. general or Jim Carrey? Which one are we talking about? Uh, Jim Curry. Jim Curry. <laughs> Best of both worlds. <laughs> is that, that, would is be that like the aviator? Is that what is, is what does the aviator title look like? That. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's New Baskerville or whatever it is. It's uh It's fine. They'll change that. They'll change that. This is early. hundred percent. Uh, this is what but, happens when you when you export without checking to see if your fonts are installed on the new machine. <laughs> um, yeah, like the first, yeah, the first trailer or, or all the VFX shots we had. Hey, no, hang on. I like how they're aggressively going very anti-sci-fi with this. Type no, definitely. Of I like that. This looks like the end of the liar, liar trailer right here. You know, uh, fully agree. So, uh, so why don't we do that? Let's, let's scan some cities and, <laughs> I, I don't know where I got that. <laughs> I was like, now. that can't be that can't be 20th Century Studios. Uh. You may like this video. Subscribe now. <laughs> Accurate. You might like this video. Subscribe now. All right, so I'm going to do beamy scans, and you're going to do uh, RoboHead, right? RoboHead. Yeah. Well, we're we're 35 minutes into the show, so you've got an hour and 25 minutes to get us some robo scans, and you've got an hour and 25 minutes to get us some robo heads. And I classically get things done in two hours of time. So Ooh. I need some footage first, so I'm going to go searching for some. Hashi, what are you doing? Whose screen do we go to um, first? You can you can you can cut to my screen for a second if you All want, right. um, uh, because I I've, I've uh, let's see you. Oh, am I? I'm not sharing, am I? Yeah. Well, well, you're old. Sorry, maybe you're not. But that's what. <laughs> All right. Still sharing from back there. Let us start sharing again. Here we go. So, Aww. I've looking so good. Here's, here's, here's my here's my so face. Young. So I've I've dropped in. Uh, this is me outside giving a review of this mall here. So I've he already did in it. The uh, uh, <laughs> delete a person's face. Uh, Plug in here, which I'll make available soon to everyone. You made a plug in, <laughs> you animal. I'm no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, but uh, I'll I'll do a little bit more of a breakdown of of what we did here. So clearly, one of the things that you need if you're going to do an effect like this, and this is not complete yet, but um, the idea of subtracting a part of someone's head is that. Let's do the most basic version of it. You probably need to have some Let's piece of a person's footage. head. Yes, exactly. that would be that's a good starting point is footage of a person's head. And then if you want to erase a part of them, you're going to need a clean background plate. And one of the one of my favorite tricks from like Action Movie Kid and from anything else that I like to do like this is that I like to keep the camera moving, especially in little sweeping movements like this. And I talk about it uh, very distinctly in the uh, um, with with Content Aware Phil himself, actually, in a, a tutorial called uh, "Bringing Things to Life" or something like that. Um, but this is a it both looks interesting to have you know new information coming in, and it also means that if I were to take this piece of footage like that, and uh, let's. I'm going to duplicate this, and then I could either use Roto Brush or I could actually try. Um, let me try this AI plugin since we're talking about AI today. Let's try Goodbye Green Screen and see if it likes running. When Goodbye I'm Green Screen. Gonna... Goodbye Green Screen. You. All right, so nice. Goodbye Green Screen is like uh, the uh, you know like your Instagram uh, back or Zoom background replacement uh, level. 
thing, which is not bad. I can you can turn up some settings in it so you're analyzing it a little bit so more. Background replacement level thing. There, not not bad, not bad. That's trying to erase me. Uh, but one way that you could try to get a clean background is to do, you know, an AI, you know, try to recognize a character, or you could go roto brush this character. And honestly, I bet you could roto brush me from this 15 second shot. But you're Hashi. You're never going to do the roto brush. You're going to do everything I, but that until I, you can. I will do whatever is the the most yeah, the least amount of work that is barely passable on a phone screen that you didn't bother to turn to, to <laughs> like from portrait mode like that. Like, I feel like that's like, I know how you're going to watch it. So that's fine. So if I run this goodbye green screen filter, which is made by Blaze plugins, I think Blaze. Uh, you can do this and I can just go into my after effects and say, uh, use this as an inverted track map like that. And then, so my, I guess my sweater thingy isn't disappearing. I don't know why it doesn't think that's, part of me what if i uncheck use lower precision well, that's cool let's remove like <laughs> just leave my sweater so like if i, I could put a velociraptor body in there yes. um who would but, do that uh, who would do that who would do that can you imagine if like that was like like part of what <laughs> made you feel like validated in your everyday life is if how many people <laughs> like your like your i made a dinosaur <laughs> thing? honestly while i've been working on this movie i've been convinced like I, there's been a part, a small part of me that's wondering, like, is Hashi going to be mad at me that I'm not making as many raptors as I used to? Constantly. <laughs> so, so you can see. Uh, uh, this, even this frame looks really good. Like your hair is keyed gorgeously here. I what if keyed, matted, gorgeously I, here? But. I want to make an Invisible Man movie where somebody, a guy, makes like an Invisible Man potion, right? And. And then this is what it does to him. And they think this qualifies as invisible. And everyone can still see them. They're just this blank void They're walking around. They're just phantom around. black. Perfect. Yeah. Phantom black. I love that this is, see, like, Seth, this is like a mix between Attack the Block and and what we're trying to do on your movie right now. It 100% is. Uh, pointing out that Attack the Block was the very first episode of VFX and Chill. The very first. If you're one of the fans, if, if any of you saw that live and are here watching now, let us know. Let us know um, if and make sure you're in some kind of therapy, some kind of mental care. You have people in your life. Uh, but also, thank you for being in our life. And also, fun fact, we did one practice episode, one practice pilot of VFX and Chill that never aired. We did it oh, for we should do a We should show. do a, a React video to that. <laughs> we'll, just do, we'll just play it and we'll be in the we'll, – we'll, Load up our mystery science we, theater. I believe we did a shot from setup. the Mortal Kombat trailer, and you did. Oh my god! You did some really cool stuff. They, I shot a plate uh, on the fly. It was like we knew immediately like, this is going to be a fun show. We did. We Again, were so we gave up. Like we pitched and made promo material for this show. Like before anyone was like approving stuff and then we're like, can we broadcast this week? And they're like, we don't know if you can do the show. Like, <laughs> uh, like, how about this? How about you do like you do a pretend show and we'll watch and see. How, I like that you know, story, how, but to credit literally, credit to do, literally invented, literally invented the idea of a TV show pilot. Well, credit where credit is due. I do want to actually, uh, I, I do want to say on the record that, Simon Walker, at the very least, was like, yeah, do it. And I'm like, well, we should do a practice episode. And Simon was like, why? Just put it out there. Just do it. Just go. That is, that Start is, right this, now. This is all true. <laughs> we've had, yeah, we've had phenomenal support. Uh, yeah, yeah, support. So Simon Walker, Paul Babb. Just like, I mean, you need executive producers in your life to say, you know, well, what if we could? But what if we could? Like Rob Lowe. I love that you managed to bring in both executive producer and Rob Lowe into that that uh, setup. You tried that need drop. To. You tried that dropping together so well. <laughs> well, we're now just trying to drop, like to work our way toward drops. Uh, the content is shaped around the drop. It really is. So uh, I mean that yeah that's I do love that the more drops we have, the more the the higher percentage of our show is hunting for drops. Like it's, I feel uh, like. I also feel like on this show, none of us are on our ADD medication right now because we're all being very distracted from actually making visual effects this week. Oh, Michael's bringing in our conversation from before the show, basically. 
That I was like, Seth, does, do I seem like I remember to take my meds today? And he was like, I, I legally can't advise you on this. And I was like, but like if you had to make an educated guess, like I'm going to take medication based on your recommendation. <laughs> I said, I said, it doesn't seem like it, but there's a lot of variables that I make it to where I can't determine it. But you are being harder on yourself than usual. And well, I've missed y'all. I was gone the last couple of weeks. I know. So was I. I we missed you too. Guys, it was weird. When Michael was guys, gone. Seth was just was here trying to be like uh guys. It was weird. I found out how codependent I am on the two of you. I was like uh I, I like literally the Slack, I'd post something in the Slack and then get nothing from either of you, which is not normal. Like Hashi could die and I'd still hear from him in the Slack, uh, right? Like he'd, if he, he could die and he would still respond to things and post uh, like Raptor videos in the Slack. That's just how he's trained us. And so I was like doing my best to like play it cool. They're out of office. It's cool. But literally like it got to a point where I told my wife, I was like, I'm really worried about the two of them. Like they're not responding to anything. Like, should I call their parents? Like, well, yeah, luckily, like speaking of parents, my wonderful mother-in-law Sarah, who watches all of our shows, um, saw saw your solo show. Oh my god! Awesome. How sweet of her! Like, I, uh, if you're watching, which you if you watch just me, then you're definitely watching this week. Uh, why aren't you? Why haven't you been on the show yet? Or have you? Uh, she was on. Like this, yes, like one of the first shows from my my new Canada house. I think uh, it was one of the shows where on episodes I wasn't on, where I was I, on I vacation. She she brought out hey, this hey, this hey. <laughs> foam, this foam finger Velociraptor as a as a number yes. one fan of the show. That if you don't happens. have this exclusive foam finger Velociraptor head, um, you know. Oh my gosh! So I will good. say the the but chat put has it also. In, uh, the chat has the chat has also commented. I wonder if the producer could encourage the guys to do more VFX and less chill. So, so we need to we need to start doing something. Yeah. This is what happens anytime we have a fan request or like a fan criticism. That was a Simpsons reference for anyone out there. Dad, why did you buy the first hover car? I know it's a hover car. Um. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll go back to sharing uh, here. Uh, so, how about this? So, we're, well, we're first. Right can the, I, I just know, the for, for the record, the show mark, for the record, means, I, this is what I'm doing. I'm still just scrolling through. I, I may be stuck here until someone pulls me out of this. Because if I go through stock music or stock footage, I'm doing it for like eight hours. It's a problem. I it's have. it's basically like try because like as a director, you're trying to get the shot that you want with no input. <laughs> it's so true. It's a hundred percent no true. input or like or reactions from the thing. At some point, this will all be AI driven. You're like, you can say like, "Hey, Gen two or whatever thing exists." I At wanna, what point do we script a whole episode with ChatGPT and then do it without telling anyone we're doing it? Well, guess what, folks. <laughs> What a twist. That'd be incredible. If they were like, we're I in the thought they it. seemed a little more distractible than usual. <laughs> but, uh, okay, uh, 240 or whatever, you know, 45 minutes into the show, let's... Uh, let's do some visual effects. Let's do some visual effects. Cuts you an all hour right. from now. All right, we're really so, starting now. All right, really starting now. Did you take your I, meds? I want to do... <laughs> I, 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 I did take them. Good. I, I can tell that I'm getting into excitable phase. So we're going to we're gonna be in the lightning round of Hashi brain here. So if you wanted to create one of these crazy negative fill kind of effects with uh, CG enhancement on a face. Negative fill? Sorry. So we're doing the opposite of filling it up, which is kind of... Actually, no, we are going to fill it up. Fill it up! Uh, so goodbye green screen. It looks like the sweater is still there, but if you look over here uh, in this little info panel, which I can't really zoom in on, um, the alpha does dip for the body here. And so you can uh, even see in my content to wear fill preview here, what it wants to replace is anything that doesn't have a full alpha anymore. And you could even enhance that by 
dialing up the amount of alpha expansion here. Mm. And then if you were to run content aware fill on a shot like this, because I'm moving my camera around a lot, you could get a cool result like this. I'm not looking at it. I'm stock footage is all I know. I mean, there's some messy bits in there, but because you're <laughs> covering most, you're gonna be covering most. That's of gonna back work. Up again, the 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 bit behind, the bit that you're gonna see through the robotic part, I think that's gonna work. I think that's I think so too. Hundred percent. Because look at this, I can put that background like literally in the background, and then I can put my foreground layer here, and then I could do something like ooh, uh, I know. I'll draw a mask here. And I'll say subtract, and then I'm going to go to my face, uh, my face tracker. You can either open the tracker panel down here, or you can click on your mask and say track mask, and then it'll open this panel up. I'm going to uh, do this. I'm going to have it track just my face. It's going to get lost here when it goes to the side. But since it's a subtract mask, check this out. Now I have... A see-through head. <laughs> nice. See-through head. So, obviously, if you are able to recreate a background behind your character, you could take your footage layer and add subtract masks. And now I could have, like, like this. Like, here's a little, like, hole through my head. And I guess I could, you know, painstakingly... I track this onto the side of my head so this looks like I've got a hole in my head and I feel like this is a good staple of like like when you were forced to do VFX for your friends like zombie short like I feel like if you're a VFX artist you 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 found yourself in the position of needing to do VFX for your friend's zombie short I was the friend it, Oh yeah I did 100% And Harry Frank was you So check this out so yeah so this is a lot of the shot of, like, of what's going on here, which is kind of cool. So imagine some shape like this that is revealing the background here. And if you had, you know, something more distinct, like the Ken Watanabe has a cool, like, it basically removes his whole ear and then it like goes down his jawline. And then one of the cool things I like is that the neck is missing too. So it's like it, you're missing the... Uh, neck and the uh, some would say the bridge to the head some would say the, the, the neck <laughs> T.S. Eliot I believe said that. <laughs> he did so let me see when he so wrote I, also, the poo. I do happen to have uh, my my hoodie here which I also did using uh, rotobrush and I think I, all I needed to do is like rotobrush this one frame and then pressed freeze, hoping that it would do its thing. Freeze. And, and it did. It did not disappoint. And I didn't need it to be perfect. I just needed it to be basically the clothing. So if I wanted to add some, you know, if I wanted to add a subtract mask, I could do it like this. Anyway, you get it. Uh, but now the, the next part that would be more tricky on something like this is if you see that cool shot from uh, the creator trailer, or is it? They're obviously moving around and doing stuff, and uh, you need to see a really distinct. Uh, where was that? Where are we? Where are you, Ken? Where are you, Ken we Watanabe? Go. Look at this beautiful, beautiful head tracking. It means that you know you need a great 3D track of your head so you can add in these robotic pieces. So to add in, the, the way I made these robotic pieces is I did the equivalent of, uh, you know, kit bashing with a bunch of weird little pieces that I found from other models, which I should have probably uh, written down. I, I, sometimes <laughs> would, I do sometimes go through a bunch of models until I figure out which ones uh, will work out and then forget by the time I'm uh, on the show. So don't, don't let me do that because I, I want the cool artists to uh, see their work being used here. So one of them was, I think I just looked up canister or something like that. Let's see here. We'll do it. We'll do it live. You can see what my experience was like. <laughs> I think I typed canister and downloadable. Right. And then yeah. found something like, 
Okay, no, it wasn't that one. It wasn't that one. It was this one. Sci-Fi Canister by C. Mitch 1. C. Mitch 1. C. C. Mitch 1. So I basically, I looked for something that had like the same kind of like vibe as, uh, I think this is it. This is what I used. I, I monkeyed with it a little bit, but here's the main like tube running through the back of my head here. And uh, wait, where, where did that go? Mech head. So yeah, so this is the main tube running through right there. I uh, booled a little circle out of it and added a little like cylinder in the middle. So there's that, because this is the coolest moment in the trailer is when you realize they turn to the side and you're like, oh, you can see right through the done, like their head. And then uh, I think that this came from a very straightforwardly labeled thing, which was, I think I looked up uh, cyborg head. Oh, but I, I probably spelled it wrong. Probably. Probably. And then I think uh, I, ha- I found, uh, what is it? It's someone's name. So, oh, I should check. Oh, yeah, I did check downloadable. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's right here. I know it. Isn't it fun to recreate this process? <laughs> because this is what it feels like when you're, when you're doing it. Oh, maybe it was Robot Head. I don't know. Jason Robot Head by Yogo. So not not by Jason. So this is just. So this has some really. Hang cool on, products. we can't see we can't see the the creator's name because our heads are in the way. There we go. Thank you. Jason Robot Head by Yogo. So look at like I feel like this one actually is I mean, it is very similar to the reveal in the creator where. Uh, you can get the get the cool effect like that, but I think that I took I just wanted this stuff and these little manifolds and hoses and stuff stuff like that bashed together until they looked like this. Like this. So the next step is you need to track this uh, track your head, and Seth, I believe that on your solo episode you were playing around with doing some of the tracking in Cinema 4D, which some sounds what? really cool. Uh, you're doing some tracking in Cinema 4D, right? I was, and I, you know what? It was, it was funny because I thought, I'm going to get the camera track, but I'm not going to get the object track. And literally in the final like seconds of the episode, I, f- I got it to work. All right. So here is the, here is the build. Here's the, like, everything is kind of like nice. pieces mushed together. Um, but then I did forget to talk about one component, which I'm actually kind of proud of. Uh, that is this uh, Hashi uh, 2.0 scan that I, I just quickly, after uh, filming this, uh, I actually made a different version of the shot before I was outside for the day. And wherever I was there, I grabbed out Polycam, which we've used on the show before. And... Unfortunately, you can't use the selfie camera. You've got to use the forward-facing camera. So I did my very best to uh, to hold my camera out like this and to sweep my arm around my head right in the spot that I was there. And that gave me this nice uh, Hashi scan. Let me open up, an, if I see if I can find an older version of this to see uh, when I had the whole... Uh, uh, head altogether. So, yeah, so here's my here's the scan of me, and it didn't need to be perfect because I'm not really using the face here. But what I really wanted to do was be able to have a great uh, copy of the side of my face that I could cut away to represent what it looks like whenever I want to subtract like this shape from it. So I built this really simple like cylinder and then stretched it apart into some kind of weirder shapes like this, and then uh, booled them. I don't know why it's not rendering my bool here. Bool! <laughs> why is that funny to me? Uh, I do not know. Um, okay, so let's see. What steps do we have here? So we have Hashi head getting... Uh, uh, why, why aren't you booling anymore? Oh, there we go. Probably was and got confused. So... I can uh, let me hide my mech stuff so you can imagine the more simple version of this, which is 
I took this really simple kind of question mark shape and used it to bool right through my head. Ooh. And then once I did that, it leaves me with this uh, cool result. Uh, but I actually didn't want this surface here. I wanted really a, uh, a hollow head shape. And so what I did next was I deleted that plane. And then uh, let me go to solo mode here. Deleted that plane. And so then I just had this shell of a Hashi right here. And used our cool thicken generator where you can grab this and give it a little bit of depth. So a little bit hard to see here with the lighting, but uh, it gave it a little bit of a lip here. I guess I could do uh, reveal my wireframe here. Now you can see the thicken generator is right uh, in, wait, no, where is it? Wait, Michael, where's our thickened generator? It's in there. It's in the. It's a. It's a generator. No, not a. Not a. It's a. It's a go up. It's in there. Why did I? Why am I not? Why is my brain not seeing it? Hang on, I'll find where it's at. Thick. You can always the, just the, press the Shift C had, and say thick. If you had a custom, if you had a custom layout before, some of the new things that are added to layouts won't come through. Because oh, it respects your custom layout. So it's like, oh, oh you had a custom layout? I'm not, I'm not going to fuss with your layouts. See, we are considerate. The uh, upgrade that cares. So you can always press Shift-C. And if you're a fan of using video co-pilots, uh, what the hell do they call that? FX, FX console. console. Incredible name. Video pilot, video co-pilots, what the hell do they call that? It's, it's, like, it's like a mix between an elephant and a rhinoceros, right? So, <laughs> Helifinoceros. Oh. I'm Classic. Charlie Brown and you're Lucy every time <laughs> I set you up. Let me see. So, yeah. So, yeah, the thickened generator. It should, it should be probably right here. But I, I saved I have I have Hashi 40 as my <laughs> layout that I like, which I don't even really like. It's just all of the tools that I've needed. I started, like, pinning to the sides, and then at some point I saved it. And, so, and it drives everyone crazy because, like, look, look at this toolbar. But yes, the, the thicken generator really should be in the menu underneath the, the subdivision surface. That, that, that is where it lives. <laughs> but in Hashi's custom UI, it does not. Yeah. So, so for example, if you, uh, yeah, if you were in the, you know, like the modeling layout probably and had a sphere and said, you know, let's generate a hemisphere, and then hemisphere? it looks like this. A hemisphere. Because if I say hemisphere then you think of the quadrant of the Earth. But if I say hemi, hemi, I don't know. I've lost it now. Does it have a hemi in it is my question. And the answer is yes. So check it out. So these are obviously, you know, thin and boring. But if you add the thicken generator, this is right here, thicken, and drop it into there. Now look. Something stupid that I didn't know how to do or like easily for the longest time, and it was always like booling and subtracting shapes and booling. making things solid just to do this. Or I was uh, stretching out. Uh, I think the old way I used to do this was I would like turn this into geometry, and then I would go to the plane mode and then select everything, and then uh, whoops, what would I do? I would uh, extrude. Extrude. Yeah, but that fusses with UVs and crap. Now, the, the, there was an old way to do it using the cloth. Uh, under, under the simulation, is a cloth generator object that you would use mm -hmm. on cloth that was that would subdivide stuff so you could get better looking cloth. But it also has the option to add thickness. But mm -hmm. it, it on, especially on models that had certain kinds of geometry flow, it just failed miserably. So this new thicken generator is so <laughs> much better. It is uh, it's got lovely. a lot more options to it for for adding thickness, which is which is really really needed. I know a lot of three D artists were like, "Oh my gosh, this solves all of my problems." But not all, you know, they still are unloved. But their art was better. And there was also this the the old school way of it, this reminds me of using shatter in uh, After Effects to do three D text. But you could add the explosion effect to something, and then in the explosion effects, you would you could choose the thickness of your exploded pieces and that would basically do the same thing. And then you could, 
export it. But but it is not as nice as the edges and the looping you can get from the thicken generator, which respects your stuff. This is trying to, you know, the idea is it this is so it can do this. So it literally is the shatter effect from uh, After Effects. But, you know, left at time zero, it looks like 3D, a 3D version of your uh, thin bowl. But anyway, I did that to, to my, my face shape here. Mm-hmm. And then what was fun about that is that once I bring it in here, let me show you what my actual full robot uh, mech head looks like with no matting on it. Here we are. <laughs> It's cute. Oh, it's those like, dead, those dead eyes. Dead eyes. He's dead. He had Dawes eyes. <laughs> but uh, this is tr- now tracked to my head, and so if I use a use basically a blurred out version of this outer surface as the alpha mat, uh, I can get a really nice blend right here where I have. Uh, let me turn this back on. So look at this. That's a very like feathery, feathery edge by using the that skin layer and then blurring it out and then using it as a depth mat for itself, sort of. It, that's it. Sort of works. It still requires a little bit of extra masking and stuff, and you can see that like I'm missing some stuff there. But um, am I making sense what I'm saying? Sort I've been of. talking for like 20 minutes now. Uh, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. I'm about to have something to be able to show. Ooh, sweet. Uh, so, yeah, to summarize steps, get a... I mean, I mean Hachi, get, a lot of what you're saying is going uh, in one ear and out the other, according to Harry Frank. Oh, that's so good. Get it? Harry, because, come back to me. Because your robot's got a hole come through back the... to me. <laughs> Are you saying bool or bool earns? Oh, my God, <laughs> Harry. Hey, man, I knew there were, we were there was something there for us. Harry uh, is getting. Harry is both making and getting our jokes today. Even even jokes I've made that YouTube. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Jason Murphy's want to know how you did that track on your head, Hashi. He, he he's 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 missed that little step of yours. I it, well, that's because I skipped that step of mine. Yeah. So here's how I did the track of my head. Where. Can I just show? Did you did there? you use did you you didn't use Cinema 40's object tracker? Did you use Geo Tracker, right? I used Geo Tracker, baby. So uh, so Geo Tracker, uh, Seth and I have been using on a handful of uh, projects. Let me see. What is was it? This layer? I don't remember which one actually has it. Unfortunately, I know. I know. I just I nudged it accidentally. Just come back, come back, Geo Tracker. Can't do that. That. Do 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 do. Okay, um, let me find. Uh, let me show you a rundown of what GeoTracker does again. But uh, I've, I, I clearly have lost my actual track for it. So let me grab a small portion of this. Let's grab from here through here. Uh, just because I just don't want this to take a very long time. The way GeoTracker works is you take your footage layer here, you apply GeoTracker. And then uh, it's going to start analyzing your footage in the background here. GeoTracker came out of the gate like a year ago now, probably, with one of the coolest uh, AE scripts or whatever uh, promos for uh, cool effects. Why is there... Why do I hear music? Is that on a show? Or is that in my oh, house? That's you. My goodness. It's like a, it's like a gentle, like... Uh, it's not me. Like 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 a like a medieval bard playing like. <laughs> oh, it's probably my. It's probably James playing. But are you going? Are you doing okay? That new Legends of Z- uh, either that or I'm. I'm oh, I'm he's losing. playing Legends of Zelda Tears and Rain. God, I want to play it so Tears badly. Tears and Rain. That's a Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> Magic of the something. Breath of the who's a what's it? Yeah. Call of the Ocarina Wizard of Breath. The, I mean, Wizards if, of the if, Coast. If you want to hear medieval music and you're in the Nashville area, weekends in May are the Renaissance Festival, Seth. Oh, I forgot about that. I went to that as a kid once. I was like, this is where the cool people go. I love this. Oh, my gosh. I love the Renaissance Festival. I love it so much. My kids dressed up as a dragon and a knight last year, and they were adorable. That's awesome. 
Oh, yeah, it was great. We're, well, I, I hope to go this year sometime if we ever get back into Tennessee, to Kentucky area. Currently, I'm in Alabama. And I'm like, also, oh. it, like, first of all, like, yeah, Renaissance fairs are awesome because, like, it, it is fun to visit any any group of nerds doing, like, Nerd at their stuff. peak nerdness, which is great. So, like, if you need cool footage to, like, play with, if you're an amateur filmmaker, go to a Ren Fair and you'll have... Yeah, idiot. ...a ginormous cast of willing, like, dressed, like, people in character that will... that that can do awesome stuff. If you like do that. It. Do people, it. People, do it right now. Uh, so, I'll show you how GeoTracker works. We've done it on the show before, but... GeoTracker analyzes this footage, which I think it basically... I'm assuming it just grabs a, uh, a motion vector pass of this footage, probably, right? Maybe. That's what its analysis is. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, and then I'm going to go to geometry. I'm going to add a primitive. And luckily, under primitives, one of them is a head. And to make this... Uh, I actually always do this when I'm using it. I make, the, I make it more opaque, uh, the little wireframe preview, and I make it super yellow. So oh, nice. uh, GeoTracker is a little bit bizarre in that you don't have to have rotation controls and things like that. You have pin controls. So what I do is I grabbed the eyes, for example, and you'll see that once I've clicked there, it's created this little pin. I don't know if you actually can see it. I'll make it, I'll make it much bigger. Can you see it now? There we go. So you add these pins by clicking on the mesh, and if you click and drag on said pins... It'll, track, it'll move them to a place like this. And then so I could say, I want another pin here on the other side of the eye, and I'm going to drag it here to where the other eye is. And you can see it's tried to start aligning the head. But then you can do stuff like, well, I know that there's an ear over here, point like that, and I'm going to drag that there. And now this head is reasonably lined up, which is kind of cool. The fewer pins you do, the less weird situations you'll get into, but the more control you have. So it's a, it's a weird trade-off. So I may, for example, want one on the middle of my chin and the tip of my nose so I can really distinctly align the tracker. And I've just grabbed a random frame in the middle, and uh, GeoTracker has a toolbar that opens up separately like this uh, for its little tracker menu, and now I can say uh, track forward from this point. And you'll see that it's... It, it did a you know an admirable job at first, but then it kind of loses the thread around here. So I can just take this one and uh, start dragging little bits. And this, uh, like my goodness, I am I am shocked that this is not a Vranos joint uh, based on the the UI being. Yeah, so uh, it's a very Vranos tool. So fast and uh, reactive. Uh, uh, and speaking I mean, of, like, I think Vranos like is the source for the Zelda music, by the way. He says he's playing it, and I think that's... he's ruined. Get out of the chat, Vranos. Your, your music's leaking into the show. You're always saying that. And And you, Wed Black, says that as the villagers are rolling in, they want no VFX in their town. Oh, man. We, we need to... <laughs> I, I, I would like for us to do more series of tutorials that had, like, 80s movie... Uh, you know, general themes throughout them as a, as a pinning structure for them Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Like our uh, our nose man teaches us Cinema 4D series that <laughs> might have existed, but then what ended up happening is we just started doing one on one calls with nose man, who taught us everything we know about. Uh, and Cinema then watching 4D. Jonas tutorials. Uh, yeah. Whenever we're really just whenever we're about to die and kill ourselves, and then Jonas is like, "Well, here's." A simple way to do it on this old tutorial you could have looked up, and like I'm, I'm trying to like, like retarget this uh, this character thing. Like, have you tried the character retargeter? We're like, oh. yeah, exactly. That, that unfortunately, a lot of the conversations go like that. Oh, hey, real quick, here's a uh, here's a here's a thing. So oh, I want to see a thing. It's not perfect at all, but it's but it's kind of a fun little rig that I built for this. What? Um, Look at that business. So That's successful. Wait a second. If only we were glowing in blue, like every sci-fi. No, totally. Guy. Well, I'm saving that for Super Comp, but I wanted to kind of walk through the rig and show how I built it um, before I did Super Comp on it. Did you um, use AI for this? I used uh, I, a me. Machine learning. I used one me. They're all the same word. They all mean the same thing. 
which is no Acrobat's Intelligent. I am going to Adobe Acrobat Intelligence. Uh, Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> what's, intelligent. what's that like, right? Uh, nailed it. So I feel so bad for the Adobe Illustrator. Whoever runs Adobe's social account for Adobe Illustrator, because all this AI talk is just ruined. Oh, all I love of that. their listening tools. I love that. Uh, sorry about your hashtag. My wife's leaving. Are you leaving me? Uh, okay. Bye. One of my kids is sick. Um, uh, it got not funny. So. Uh, wait, I interrupted something you were doing, Hosh. Do you want to finish what you were doing, and then I can... Uh, I was making this stupid break? puns about uh, AI. Oh, oh, all means. I was going to say is that uh, after you've created your keyframes for you know the more aligned uh, pieces, you then click this Refine All button, which sort of takes the tracking data, takes the pins that you've grabbed, and tries to smooth out uh, the track of your head. And you, you see it's done a pretty okay job here. There, there are some weird spots like this. I found that it's smoothing is shifts. basically like it waits till the very last possible second and then shifts itself like across mm-hmm. one key, one or two keyframes in a way that isn't great. Yeah, and or yeah, the, because I wanted this to be a very like turn the head all the way around and reveal a shot. It's it's a little bit confusing, but from this point, it means that you could add in uh, from GeoTracker. You could say export. Um, you could actually export this file to uh, Cinema 4D if you wanted. What? Or you could just say, uh, say. Wait, 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 wait. Not that you one. can. You can export to file right here. God. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing this such a backwards way. Export I don't even need to file. anymore because I know how to do it in Cinema now. But still, can't believe it. God in heaven. Export to file. So. You can also just say, like, export a 3D null. Oops, that's the, my surface point one. I want a 3D null that is at the same location as the... Uh... Oops, oh, what did I do? Ah, okay. It may have done it, but what is your what are oh, your time codes I'm, on your comp? Oh, yeah, my ti- I messed up my time codes. It will send it back to zero. Uh... It sends it back in time. We have time travel yeah. and... So I can just press U, and that'll reveal where my keyframes are on this null. I can drag it back until I can actually see my keyframes again. So if you track darn, darn a, for not pre-comping this. if you track a source like a layer that basically I would recommend pre-comping your plate first, because if you track uh, a layer that has edits on it, it won't read that time code. It'll just put it at wherever this frame zero of yeah. Oh wait, they're too far forward. I wasn't even looking at the the data that I have. I love. I literally have arrows. Telling me like which direction the keyframes are, and was, oh, that's and I was right. It'll put it on. It'll make a layer, but it'll put it on the time code of that layer, not the comp. So it'll be later. That makes sense. Uh, there they are. What's, now you gotta uh, know. The keyframe uh, train has has arrived. Then I can just use my keyboard shortcuts, Alt and bracket, to put my little null in. And oh, another way know. that I that that is actually that can be very helpful for something like this is instead of GeoTracker, <laughs> say you don't want to buy a plugin is you could do what I was I don't doing want to buy a plugin and just, and just say uh, let's let's put a little mask around my face right here and you could either use the you know the mask tracking the face tracking detail thing or just you know do the really complicated work of that couple of keyframes on this face right here and then let's pre-comp this and move all of the attributes to a new composition. That way I've got just this little beautiful face right here and then I'm going to go to the camera tracker. Let's try this. Let's try tracking the track camera. Analyzing the background. This isn't very many frames. Why would you choose GeoTracker over, say, Moves by Maxon for something like this? Um, that's a good question. I think that Moves by Maxon would benefit from a from an interface where you could feed a file to it instead of having to film. Like, I could actually film my screen of me performing this, and I would actually get the, the proper result, which is kind of cool. So there are, there are so many ways to track ahead these days. So I, I do kind of dig that. But uh, yeah, like I've used a 
it, the reason I've done it, Michael, is because I'm wildly inconsistent. <laughs> Sometimes I will use uh, the After Effects camera tracker like this. So here we go. Here's the After Effects camera tracker. And I could probably say, uh, let's create a point that is like, you know, the generally the ridge of, you know, or whatever. I'm trying to get the forehead shape in here. I just, want, I just want some kind of solid that works in here. Great. Okay. So now I've, I've tracked my Success. head, which is pretty successful. It's really great. Um, what I should have done is I should have done a copy of this thing before I, I moved it out. But say you did it like this, you could do this, get rid of your mask. Now you have a beautifully you know, 3D tracked thing like this. And now you get it. Like I could use this hole as the way to uh, punch out my footage. So let's make that a an inverted thingamabob and let's bring in our clean plate background. And now we can create a cool shot from the, the quick and the dead. Oh, whoops, I forgot that my background isn't trimmed to this length of time. Oh, what have I done? What happened, Michael? What did I do? Oh, no, what did you do? My video drivers aren't updating. What the heck? You have caps lock on by accident, do you? Probably. <laughs> anyway, you get it. Now you could have a solid that's tracked to your head. You could add like a particular system that's spraying out of the head. Ooh. Uh, anyway, Seth, you you were you were teasing some really cool stuff there, and I've t been talking for way too long for my comfort Hashi, level. you've never talked way too long in your life. Thank you. That you should end. <coughs> if you ever have a gathering of the friends, uh, you should say that to 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 all of them on their way out. You talked the perfect amount. <laughs> oh, that's a quick way to get get me very stressed out on the way home. So. All right, this little number I did. So let's let's find the footage, and I'll show you what I did here. It's uh, this shot here from our grid. Um, so I need a couple different layers. I need first off, I need just a base layer that's going to be the plate, the background that will remain untouched. Then I need a second duplicate of the plate um, that I will call the wall. Then I need a third duplicate of the plate that is going to be the edge. And uh, let's just start with that. So first off, uh, let's start with the wall. So I'm going to apply, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Depth scanner. Look at that response in this. And it Man. immediately created uh, a depth map. So I'm not going to touch anything here, except I'm going to uh, create a null object real quick. And I'll explain why in a second. I'm going to call this my controller, and I'm going to apply a slider control to it. And so I'm going to make it to where I can have this slider control visible because I'm going to be parenting some stuff to this slider and doing some expressions. So uh, what I'll start with is <laughs> what what happened? Yeah, well, uh, well, Jared, uh, well, Jared Johnson in the chat was asking uh, Michael, "Where in Alabama? I'm in Birmingham, and." So I was chuckling earlier at the idea of Michael saying, like, Michael being right behind you, Jared. But then I started laughing because someone said, like, hey, they're, like, I didn't know they could play interstitials and stuff like that on a streaming show. And we love your interstitials, Seth. And so when you said unparented this layer, it, it's, it's very difficult to explain, huh. like, an ADD thought that happens in, like, a split second. Oh, 100%. But where, what happened? What was it? What happened was that we need a drop for unparented. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> It's just is like, it just a clip from the Parent Trap played in reverse? No, no. no I think it's, it's I think a clip it's from like of like from Tim of like Batman. Bruce Wayne. It's a clip of it's Bruce Force. It's Bruce Wayne in the alleyway, like pulling back as, 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 with his parents' Fun bodies parents. at his feet, and he's crying. Oh, God. That also works for trap code particular squawking at on where you spawn particles from parent particle death. Uh, oh, 100 percent emit from parent death is just one of the greatest. Uh, it's where, uh, most, it's where most anti-heroes come from. I'm sure most heroes emit on par upon parent death. Um, okay. Sorry, so, to answer the question, I'm, ne I'm, ne I'm near Dauphin Island, which is not Dolphin Island, said weird. It's D-A-U-P-H-I-N, Dauphin Island. I'm near there. 
It's behind you. It's because Come those in over, Georgia everyone. know how to spell dolphin. Um, Where are the rest of you watching from in the chat, folks? Uh, I'm I'm Alabama. Where are you all at? Ooh, uh-huh. I love that. Yeah. So I'm going to. So you created uh, a controller that was that you linked yes, to the a controller. So I'm in mapping on depth scanner down here on this wall layer. We're still on the wall layer. This uh, raw depth multiplier, I can move this thing about, uh, and it obviously like moves right now. Check this out. Here's what's really fun, is if I keep it a raw, but I go instead of a depth map, show me slicing under the mode. Ooh, slicing. And so right now it doesn't look like much, but if I set the minimum to 49 Don't and the maximum to Seattle. 51, and then I start moving this depth multiplier. Oh, well, first off, let me turn off the background plate, and now you'll see what it's doing. That is, that is always how I demo. <laughs> I know. A de- like a depth reveal kind of thing. I always have it over the original plate, and it's always unimpressive, and I'm like, why isn't it doing anything? Yep. So now it's creating a slice that is between 49% and 51% of the depth multiplier. What? So it's scan- creating this really cool scan up and down like this. So that's cool, right? Uh, that's one element that we need of the scan. Uh, that's cool. And like, and say you just had, you know, like if you don't have a depth scanner uh, and you just sent the frame to Photoshop, ran the neural filter to get a depth map out of it, or use one of the online web tools to grab a free depth map, you could do this same effect by basically taking your gradient and uh, using the extract tool and just sliding what slice you're extracting out of it. Exactly. Um, I'm not going to show it off because that'll take me down a rabbit hole of failure. No, but, uh, but lovely that they built it into this plugin because that's an obvious thing that you might be doing. Absolutely. So I'm also, real quick, just so I can see it, if I happen to turn the background back on, I'm going to apply a fill layer and I'm going to set it. Let's keep it at red for now just for reference, right? So I've got now, I've got this red layer that goes back and forth with the, uh, with the depth oh, multiplier slider. washing with blood. So now... The thing is, this look has like the big blue like wall that's that's traveling with it. So well, this is supposed to be the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the depth scanner effect. Uh, why don't I copy it and the fill layer, uh, the fill effect. I'm going to copy them both and paste them on the edge here. I'm going to change the wall to purple for now, just for reference. And I'm going to turn the maximum up to 100. So now, no. as I move the depth multiplier on the wall, it will move the whole wall like backwards and forwards. And obviously I want that to go with the, uh, uh, with the edge here. So I can just go into uh, the edge. I'm going to choose to parent the edge to the wall. I'm going to... Uh, uh, alt click the depth. I don't have to alt click anymore. I keep forgetting the pick whips are right here. I'm just going to take this pick whip from the depth multiplier on the edge and parent it to the depth multiplier on the wall. And now as I move the wall up and down, it the edge and the wall travel together. Now, here's uh, where I come into an, uh, an issue is that I need... This wall seems to be infinite, and I need it to have like edges on the left and right. So here's the solution that I came up with for that. Uh, I'm going to create a solid, and I'm going to call it the wall mat. Uh, I have that. I'm going to move that up here, and I'm going to apply a transform effect to it. I'm going to uncheck uniform scale. Ooh. And I'm going to go down here into the scale width. And let's start it off at like 30. And so now that it's here at 30, if I go to my edge, I'll apply a set mat and and set it to the wall mat (laughs) effects and mat. I love that this also could look like a, a horrible website, like... That's your text box in the middle with some like white Sarah. Oh, hundred percent. Yes. And it's like things Geo to cities. do in Seattle. Yes, this is the Seattle Geo City oh, site. On Geo. <laughs> uh, the way oh, the man, way you gotta you gotta complete this 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 set of presets plugin, wrap it up and call it Geo Cities. We absolutely do. I think that the way we do this is we find uh, where did I I had it plugged I thought I had it installed. Um 
Oh, I don't have Pixdither installed currently. That's a bummer. Oh man. It's the other okay. thing I was noticing is that you could use the the sol- you know, the uh, solid from your map there and make it like a fast box blur uh, adjustment layer mat. And you could have like this cool, like thick, like oh. jello, like little oh, bit over the. So stand by. We're going to have some fun. That's a great idea. Um, I was actually going to do that in Supercom, but I think that's a fun idea what you just said. So uh, uh, wall mats. Okay. So now I'm set the uh, edge. I've got a set mat on it for the wall mat with effects and masks turned on. I'm going to copy that and paste it on the wall. So now, and if I turn the wall off, you'll see now it looks. Uh, that wall. Hey, look at travels. that. The thing is, the wall needs to get wider. So here's my solution for that. Keyframes. Huh? Keyframes. Well, keyframes, but the thing is, I want to be able to, like, I like having a slider that I can adjust and, and, and change later and have one set of keyframes that I can change later. So here's my trick when it comes to stuff like this. I'll use value at time. Uh, to help me out. So right now I've already got the depth multiplier of the edge uh, uh, parented to the wall. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to close this, that I'm going to co- collapse the edge right now so that I don't have to worry about accidentally doing anything there. So I'm going to uh, on frame zero or on frame, let's see, it's 73. Oh, I didn't know that. Let's, let's make sure that our frame starts at zero. And it's one of the worst things I'm bringing in stock footage where the, like the time code of the clip from which the stock oh, was yeah. pulled is baked into it. So you get this new t- this new composition and it's like starting at two hours and 46 minutes in. You're I like, know. that's not okay. You're like, what the heck? And like at, at 25 frames per second, probably. 100%. So depth which, multi- which only triggers you if you're in the, if you're not from the UK, probably, right? Uh, yes, because that's, they're all pals over there. All pals over in Europe in they're general. I mean, Pre-Brexit, they were all pals. I mean, they're still all pals, but... So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, starting with uh, the wall mat, I'm going to... Well, let's start down here on the wall. So I'm going to, on the depth multiplier... Hang I'm on, going... Seth. Can you scooch our faces over a little bit to the less used part of the oh, UI? People yes, are yes, having I lots can, uh... of difficulty seeing things. Thank you. This is why people have holes in their head in the future, so they... More visibility... <laughs> So I'm going to go to 1,000, which is the furthest I can go on this map. So I'm going to, on frame zero, uh, I'm going to put a keyframe there on the depth multiplier of the wall. And then I'm going to go to frame 100 and set it to zero. And then I'm going to alt-click so I can do some expressions here. I'm going to say value at time. And in the parentheses, a little confusing, I'm going to say time to frames, in parentheses. And in that parentheses, I'm going to pick whip the slider up there. And time now, to frames, that's, that's beautiful. I, I didn't know about that one. I always use like over, like divided by the <laughs> frame rate that I know. Oh, it weirdly actually isn't working the way that I, the way that it was working before. So if I, go to slider 100 but if I go anywhere in between oh that's weird it shouldn't be doing that and value at time oh frames to time that's what wait frames yeah it should be frames to time because it's bringing in frames my bad so now it as I like slide this slider from 0 to 100 it goes from the furthest to the closest and I'll explain and I'm going to show you why I did that because now on the wall mat first frame I can do scale width at 30 and on uh, frame 100 I'll do scale width 100 and then I'll just copy this value at time expression that I did and paste it in that expression to there so now as it gets closer to us the width of that of that solid expands as it gets closer. So I can just have, I can just control this one slider and it will, uh, and it will, it will slide be- the anime. It will slide across this animation that I've created, uh, and do where I need to be. Now let's make this look a little more like we want it to look right. So in this fill layer on the wall, 
I think I will turn it off. And it went, oh, yeah, that's right. I actually need it on. I need it to be at least like a white color. What I might actually do is apply fractal noise to it. Ooh. And you know what's fun about this is I can alt-click the evolution here. Oh, actually, I can not alt-click it yet. I can just keyframe, set on zero the evolution to be zero, and on frame 100, set it to be like 10 whole cycles, and then copy this value at time and paste it. So now, as it moves, the evo it evolves. That's maybe a little too much. So... Go to oh, that's delightful. And do like five. And so like now it'll Dennis evolve Hopper. as it moves. Uh, let's turn up the scale of this and contrast down maybe a bit and set it to screen. And edge, let's turn that to white. And maybe even set the maximum to 50 so it's just like even thinner. And so that is basically as far as I got when I showed you stuff. So now uh, I want to kind of bring the stuff into Supercomp and mess around with the glows and the blends and stuff that it's doing. Um, bring it home. So why don't bring I do it? Bring it home. Effects, RGV effects, Supercomp. So let's start by saying the wall, the edge should also be an additive layer. I keep on thinking that you were talking about Pink Floyd and U2 during this. Oh, 100%. The edge on the wall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to apply a... Well, you know what? I could have this be additive or... Mm, so the oh, question that's a good is... Point. Yeah, do, do people remember that a few weeks ago we added adjustment layers to Super Comp? Oh, that's I forget. Cool. Is this... In do I have the current version? Oh, I don't. I need to update. I even recorded a little tutorial about it that I just need to record myself saying, hi, this is a tutorial, and then it <laughs> plays. But I haven't been willing to do that. For I totally weeks, forgot so. that, and I haven't updated it. I need to update it. Um, but for now, basically I have a decision about whether I want to keep it in an additive layer and apply a heat blur behind it, which actually works. That kind of does... Oh, see, there's my jello effect. That yeah, I so never mind. That's exactly what I want to do. Okay, then the... Laser jello. Optical glow, too much. Let's set the highlights uh, only to like 75, maybe. Or let's set it to like 50. But let's set the highlights roll off. No, that's not it. Let's set our amount to 5, or maybe even 1. And the size to like 500, maybe. That's Now we're not seeing anything. Uh, Ooh, cool. But I can colorize this dude. Mm, you know what I think you need is a uh, pixel motion blur on your, on that layer. Oh yeah. Smart. Well, I can't add it now because it'll cancel out all effects. Um, pixel motion blur cancels out every effect that happens how prior about, to it. How about force motion blur? I think it does the same thing. Maybe it doesn't. Let me see. So you see force motion blur it does not do that. Okay. I mean, that or you could add a, um, it actually might even look cool to add a radial fast blur that's at the vanishing point. Uh, radial fast blur. Oh. And it set its origin at the... Uh, Already that's cooler. So do that on the... Uh, set its origin where? On, on the, uh, just at the vanishing point. Uh, down here. No, no, no. Um, like the, the oh. whole scene's vanishing point, like the horizon and the sky. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Vanishing point. And then copy that same fast blur to your edge uh, effect. Oh, I applied to that to wall, Matt. Whoops. All right. There you go. See, look at that. Oh, now Turn nice. it down a little bit, but you'll get a, like, northern lights Ooh, sweeping through it there. That's very cool. Uh, uh, Jared Johnson from the chat is asking, what do you do uh, with the flag on top of the Space Needle? Since the wall is farther back in terms of perspective, are you, do you just do a simple mask? Yeah, you just for that, deal you'd have with to, it, like, Jared. You'd have to get in and roto it or just paint the friggin' thing out. It, it's funny because I, I've grabbed the same stock from our same shared stock site and I have rotoed that uh, stupid flag. Space Needle, but I didn't want to. I don't know where I can find it quickly, so 
I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> um, oh, actually, no. Mine was a moving camera. The camera was moving more. Oh, okay. Well, the camera is moving here, but... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is this shot then. <laughs> um, so, the, uh, so let's see. So back to Super Comp. This is like cranked to 11, and I'm not crazy about it. So I think what I might do is in the wall, just do some levels stuff. To bring and it you down. can turn down that radial fast blur amount that I, that I told you about. Yeah, I might. Don't, don't mean to make it like crazy. I just was trying to you made it on cool, the edge You made it cool, buddy. You made it really like, cool. There you go. See, like now it's just some like... If I turn it back on the wall mat, it just like, it creates a nice blurry edge. Uh, yeah. So the uh, edge itself needs obviously some colorized glow. You know, one thing you could do or go, actually go ahead and do is... Uh, Apply some fractal noise to the edge and do that before the radio fast blur. So like it's like the solid edge, but if I add some fractal noise, it creates a little bit more uh, organic breakup. Yeah, organic breakup. And then it can, which, you know, is every every breakup I've been through is purely organic. Uh, I can also go ahead and just do color. Do I want to do color vibrance now? Uh, That's a good question because you have some good controls over that in Super Comp and you have some good controls mm -hmm. out here. That's true, I do. And, you know, I'll try That's what I like about Super Comp is like you can work wherever you're comfortable. Like, you, like if you know you want the effect on that layer, just go add it to the layer. Let me, Dude, uh, that looks awesome. That looks like a, it's like this, like Annihilation Ghost Wall. <laughs> annihilation Ghost Wall coming for you. Oh, I remember that the I think the very first tutorial I started recording for Red Giant when I was employed here was an Annihilation one, and then Film Riot. Oh, I was about to say like, I don't remember ever seeing put out. It. No, I I started I I pivoted to A Wrinkle in Time because it was similar. -y. Oh yeah, and I think I added a joke somewhere in the middle that I was working on that effect, and then they did it perfectly and exactly the way I was going to do it. So fine. I was thinking about that because the background that I pulled for the promo video that we watched in the beginning was um, reminded me of that Annihilation Wall. Annihilation Wall! Um, so, uh, yeah, that's 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 how I do it, and I just keep on... This keep looks on. really cool, man. You know what, man? You look really um, cool. Oh, wait, go to your fractal noise uh, to its transform settings. Oh, Uncheck yeah. uniform scaling. Um, and now... Set the width as to whatever it was, but then uh, scale that height up. Oh, now we're in the 19, 1996. Scale the height to what? Scale the height, like, way up. Oh, interesting. So it's even more scaling. Yeah, so smart. Yeah, there oh, you that's there smart. You and we're back, baby. Nice. Hey, you Playing okay, with the obvious? aspect ratio of right. things like noise and... Uh, what else? Like in your like cool. lens flares and glows, like s offsetting the the uniform scale of them can oh, yeah. give you, you know really what? cool results. Let me see. Do I have a? This is one of my favorites. Is the lens distortions uh, makes these really cool. Ooh. I use these a ton on the darker color short. Uh, it's in the end titles. Um, it, it's very cool stock lens flares. Oh, I love those. Uh, let me find. And if you didn't have these, and but you had Chromatown and like a text layer, you could recreate those too. Hashi, you're not wrong. I'm not. Why Let's would I be? Get the size of the comp. Uh, and it's. Ugliest font in existence. Which one? I, I don't know. I don't remember what I used this font for, but... Oh, it was for Maxon Computer in uh, this promo that Michael would really like us to finish. We teased oh, it a bit oh, yeah. on Office Hours this weekend. I would like to finish it too, but... Uh, You're waiting on a logo from me. It'll be, it'll, I'm, wait, I'm waiting on Seth, so, you know, what I'll are you going to do? I'll get it done this week. What, what can I do to make this edge better? The edge still looks... Uh, well, super don't trust them with a major Broadway by the, musical. By the way, uh, folks uh, watching this, when this promo comes out on the Red Giant social media channels, 
uh, please make sure you share it far and wide because I want people to want us to make more of them. And if they see that lots oh, of yes. people like them and share it, yeah, could we, be yeah, telling us more of favor. Them. Yeah, like so yeah, make uh, sure, make or, sure or more promos more like that, Michael, sprints. or just more promos in general. You want from us? I want both, but that promo is amazing. So, when that pro- so make sure you follow Red Giant News on Twitter and Instagram and Red Giant Software on Facebook. And then when you see this promo for VFX to Chill come out, it's all old timey and whatnot. Make sure you share it with all of like hit that share, hit that retweet, share it out, make it happen. Hit that share, hit that retweet. And there's a, I think on Instagram there's a little sherry option at the top, like three dot menu to share things. Anyway, reshare is what I'm saying. Do it. Well, let's see here. While you tinker with that, I'm just gonna let, let me show people Chroma Town real quick. Yeah. Because this is this is one that uh, I don't reach for it often, but it is, but it is, it is neat. Uh, so. But when I do. Um, I wish I could describe this the way uh, Stu Mashwitz described this before it was actually a thing. But uh, let's see, I'm just going to write lens blob right here. And then on a top adjustment layer, I'm going to add the effect Chroma Town, which is in universe. And some people might have applied this and been like, I don't know what it's doing. It looks like chromatic aberration. But it's even cooler than that. What it is, is it is basically, it takes whatever layer is below it, gives it a start position and an end position, and then interpolates between the two. So, for example... But not just position, also scale and rotation, scale, rotation and blur and lens distortion. So if I said it should start at a scale of zero, you all see what's happening. It starts with a scale of zero and has created this weird interpolation of things in between. And say hey, I hey, want... Hushy, hushy. T- tick the box on at the very bottom, the shape overlays button, and it shows off what's happening. Oh, yeah, here we go. So yeah, here's my original image, and it's just you know spinning back into the background, just like if you were doing a, what's that called, like a, fee- a video feedback loop, uh, filming a monitor or something like that. So you can do something like this, and in here you can play with the colorfulness, uh, the chromatic spectrum. So I could tint this kind of cool, like those lens blurs that you were doing earlier, and I could start uh, playing with the amount of lens distortion at the beginning and the amount of lens distortion at the end, and then, let's see, let me move my blob somewhere more toward the center. There we go. So it overlaps itself. So now you can see what's happening is it's like a motion blurred effect of that layer spinning forward or whatever. But you could do crazy things like make the scale really big. You could say that the star position is like off camera. And you can go there. You can kind of see the letters that are going into it. Um, but as you play with the colorfulness of this and the tints of these, and you can dial up no, the quality, what's, which is basically the just the the, uh, the hue and the, what did I say? The colorfulness and the chroma tint. Tint, that's the word. And uh, quality basically is the number of iterations that it's, uh, basically the number of these things that it's doing. And you can get some really crazy results. Like, look at this. If I just move the... Uh, my text layer around this area, you can start to get crazy. I did a, I did really a bit thanks. of a tip. I did a bit of a tip Tuesday post, and I did a I talked about it in my presentation at NAB this year about how you can use Chroma Town on top of Fractal Background from Universe, because like Fractal Background has like oh that's a good idea has some like okay stuff, but it's it's not like a lot of modern backgrounds that you'd want. So yeah, just for example, just apply Fractal Background real quick, and you kind of take a look at what Fractal Background looks like. It's like fine and you go to the, and you go to fine. the presets and they're, they're fine but like they don't feel modern anymore but if you add chroma town to it like you get that organic movement that you want and remember fractal background automatically loops you set how long of loops you want and then you can get this gorgeous loop but then you add chroma town on top of it and it gives this kind of like real nice subtle modern like glowy chromatic feel to it now I'll say it takes a little longer to start the preset browser nowadays because they now can uh, Maxon can now deliver cloud-based presets. So uh, they it's reaching a little up bit into the clouds first, in the back. Yeah. So on your on your your initial launch of the Universe dashboard or preset browser, it'll take longer than uh, you're used to, but then it'll be faster after that usually. There we go. So now I could add Chroma Town, and I could say in the end I want its scale to be really high like this so it's basically like zooming forward and I want it to rotate from there 
and I want there to be more lens distortion at the end. Ooh, I'm basically making a Mac background thingy right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to do a tutorial on making uh, Apple-y uh, backgrounds using a universe line in Chroma Town. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm about to do it for, like, uh, Make It Monday. But not this week, but next, probably, after the sale. So, yeah, so here, with the fra- since the fractal background is animated and it's playing over this, you can create this cool, like, northern lightsy effect with just a couple of things. And you could do it with footage, too, which is kind of cool. I, I, so, I love taking a gradient... And so like, if you had this video, (laughs) you you found, (laughs) you found the Mortal Kombat plate. This is when I was, yeah. Whenever, yeah. Seth texts me to let me know how he's doing. He, he acts it out in my God. I need that so badly. So I can drag that down here instead. Oh, whoops. I guess I should make a, let me delete the fractal background and I'm going to turn this solid into an adjustment layer. There we go. Now I've got Seth Seth's footage back there chromatowning. So here's the cool part of it is like uh, whatever you put back here, you can get really nifty results. Like what about Seth reaching forward here? Man, to have access to these folders is something we should do on the last day of the show. When it, like whenever it happens is just <laughs> let everybody have all all of our all of our files. Oh, look at that. See, like there, I can see your face reaching through this 3D void. Darwitus H. Das, das Vitus HD says, I feel like Fractal Background, as well as many other universe plugins, provides you a great starting off point. Indeed, it, they really do. Like Fractal Background, I use all the time because it's got that really nice organic looping, but then I put other stuff on top of it to get the look I want. This background right oh, this here, does. this colorful background here was in, a combination of... Um, Combination of spec religious, right? Uh, the spe- spec religious, I think. What spec religious? Whatever it, whatever gave me the gradient, which must have been spec religious, and then spectra religious, and then chromatown. Oh, then transform, rotating it, um, and then uh, chromatown applied on top of it gave me this very very fun result that I use in all kinds of VFX and chill related stuff. Love it. All right. So have I vamp. I, I, I didn't mean to just anyway, oh here like here we go I've added a, a kaleidoscope effect now I can get some, some of those like lens blobs that you're doing earlier uh, what, what would I do to, to mimic it I would add a I guess on my adjustment layer I'd add a vignette to it that was really strong oh hey guys uh, Michael I, we, I don't know if you pointed this out like we had a complaint John Corbett said I love you guys but that looping logo at the top is making me oh yeah I was, I was about to bring it up yeah he's okay yeah, I can fix that for you better for you. I know it's a hover car. So yeah, uh, Chroma Town. That looks so cool. Huh? That's the coolest Chroma Town thing I've ever seen. So yeah, like, honestly, yeah, just like dive in, start playing with Chroma Town and Really, just like just like test putting random pieces of footage that you have behind it, and you might end up with something that is really cool and magical. And like this would be annoying to try to come up with independently of this, but it looks really cool. And then you take this result, and then you say like, you take uh, a really sad thing like the like uh, spoiler alert when this. When Hanzo dies in the Mortal Kombat movie, because apparently we were going to cover this. Or Someone something. dies in Mortal Kombat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to like to be the one. But look, but if I take that that Chroma Town layer and just uh, do a little, you know, blending mode screen over top of this, now it's just like it's, it's like a bright sunny day. It's like a play. <laughs> look at that. See, it's like beautiful. Uh, the 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 close up though it looks like a. <laughs> Like join us for Mortal Kombat Week at the park at the Parks and Rec Center. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Well, Mortal Kombat Week I, at the Parks and Rec Center makes me really happy. The <laughs> idea of a local like Parks and Rec Center having fights to the death. <laughs> now spell it with a C for oh, just gosh, for this. I, I don't know if I can watch this. Oh, perfect. <laughs> 
That Love really this. does look like an ad, like a local rec center ad. All right, uh, I'm you. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this graphic design right here. Um, and you uh, take us out. Yeah, you you go. You finish your uh, your sky beam. Oh, well, my sky beam is about as great as it's gonna look. It's just uh, I mean, I, a actually, great I, sky beam. I can get it looking better, but this is a uh, this works for now. For the fun, I want to animate the fractal noise going like up or down one direction. So you <gasps> Yeah, that's smart. Yes, animate the animate the fractal noise that's like it's smart. peeling up off off of there. I will. I'll do that in the, at some point. But for now, it's one fifty two, and you know what, guys? You complained that we had all chill and no VFX, and guys, I think we had a very even amount of both. We did. Should I we say had about this an hour an hour of chill and an hour of VFX? It's evenly split. Way better than no exactly. chill. Exactly. It's right there in the title. Okay, I'm going to save this thing as the. Mortal Kombat <laughs> event. I, and then I'll find that like months later. Like, I wanted heck? to like come up on your like Apple TV like screensaver uh, photos. Just comes up and your kids are probably at a point where they don't even ask you like what something is. They're just like, oh, it's probably from dad's work. Whatever the hell he does. Yeah, like, ah, oh, my dad is all doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say uh, hello to. Uh, and James' friend Nikita, if uh, you decided to watch the show, they're very curious about about what at my failing to describe what I do. Oh, it's very funny. Uh, Stu Mashowitz was talking at the summit. <laughs> his son has started to do, you know, some video work of his own, and so he came to Stu. He's like, "Hey." Dad, can I have some money? I want to get this add-on for Premiere so I can do cool edits. Uh, it's, this, it's this tool called Universe that I've heard is really... No way. <laughs> he was so disappointed to find out that his dad was actually useful for more than just money because his dad goes, I, I make that. Uh, That's so funny. That happens to me. Like that, there, We hit a season a couple years ago where Elliot would start talking to me about something he saw and oh, he was like, I saw it on a YouTube video. I follow this channel called Corridor Digital. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know those guys. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, like, those are friends of mine. Like, I, I, like we're in the same space. He's like, what? No, you're thinking about different people. So I go into my, like, journal, and I pull up pictures know, from NAB. Face, FaceTime with Ren. And I'm like, no, one. here's Ren right here. And he's like, ask him about dinosaurs. He was like, what? I don't understand. Like, he was, he couldn't, and this <laughs> happened, kept repeatedly happening where he would, like, discover that like uh, all these people he was watching on YouTube were just like friends of ours and he just he couldn't it didn't make sense to him and it made me uh, really happy that's like the like like realizing like wait like Tony Hale from Arrested Development that like that's the same oh dude? that happened this past year too we watched it Arrested Development and Elliot was like what? like he didn't say it out loud but he's like he's like I didn't realize Tony was funny cool and cool and <laughs> like um uh, another Especially thing that happens is fun. With you, so. Another thing that happens is fun is, and you guys know this feeling where uh, we were in the movie theater and they were playing. It wasn't trailers yet; it was just commercials, like not even commercials. It was like the theaters uh, spots they put on to like try and recruit people or get people to buy the card, gift cards or whatever. And I turned to Elliot and I was like, "You see that glow that's happening around the letters?" That like, <laughs> I was like, "You know, I made I, you know, I that that plugin was my idea," and he was like. And he didn't say it, but I thought he's probably thinking about how bad they're using it and how bad it looks. Like, you know, like the ones, the times that I notice our plugins, things that I had a hand in, it's always being used badly. Oh yeah, uh, it's just like I'm. I'm just you know, <laughs> always. He's, he's thinking I'm. I'm so thankful you're here right now. Oh, what was that thing? Something happened this past year that was. I want to say it was a Trumpy thing. And Hashi, you were like pretty sure they use Electrify. And Ecto, uh, like you and I are, Trump, you and I are both some, complicit. It was, it, was in those, this. it was those, it was those collectible NFT quote unquote <laughs> those uh, play, things. Like playing oh, cards. Oh, forgot about things. those. They were like superhero versions of. Oh, so people. did the world. Yeah. I forgot about those. And Hashi, you were like Seth. We're complicit in this because there's Electrify and we, Ecto on it. We we can't police what people do with our tools. <sighs> That's true. Yet we just we just make the tools. We can't yet, well, but. Soon, soon with the AI, the creator. Didn't we make? Wasn't one of the promos that we? 
I forget. Plus the four. Oh, wait, we should. We do need to mention the sale uh, before we before we close the show again. Uh, there is a sale coming. To, uh, I think it starts Tuesday. Forty percent off new subscriptions to Max on One, thirty percent off subscri- new subscriptions to any other tool. So if you're like a video editing person who wants better color grading, now is a good chance to jump to Red Giant complete subscription because you get all the magic ability things that make color grading easy and fast. Why don't right I play there. the promo do one more time before we cut to yeah, everybody do dance and, now. And, 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 and do us a favor. If you're, if you're out there and you see one of the ads that it's clear that Seth, me, or Michael made, just retweet it. Like, and say, and you can even quote tweet it saying like... Seth, Hashi, and Michael are making... Stupid me. ad. But yeah. like... But that I wasn't gonna is buy lovely, it, and then we, and we'll get to keep doing crazy, fun. silly stuff that we're doing. Say VFX and Chill made me retweet this, and hashtag yes. VFX and Chill. I love it. And I love the reward the will be more VFX and Chill. Uh, hopefully, when I click this outro button after the promo again, that uh, everybody dance now will not kick in again, which happened to me last week again <laughs> while I was by myself. Uh, I think I fixed it, but <laughs> the most pathetic end screen of a solo show. <laughs> it is. Yes. A solo show is everybody dates now. Oh, I love you guys I so much. You, everybody have guys. a wonderful week. You, audience, thank you so much. We'll be back next week and probably talking about, I don't know, Little Mermaid or something. Or some crap. Bye. Bye. What's so special? It's a 4030 special. What's a 4030 special? It's 40% off Max on One or 30% off any annual subscription. What can you do with Max on One? Great question. All this stuff. What? 40% off Max on One is a ridiculously low price for all the tools you get. Yeah, 30% off any annual subscription is pretty darn good too. So like, why is this special so special? Well, because it's the two year anniversary of the last time we had a May special, special. What? Remember when we regularly held a sales special in May, like every year? We didn't have a special last year. That's why we're especially excited to announce a very special special to celebrate the two-year anniversary of our May specials. I'm tired. How long is the special? Three days. Great. And why are there two of me? I don't know. Oh baby, let's be a vex and chill. Our weekly talk show where Seth and Hoshi break down the sure. From movies and shows Then try to put them back together again Pain.